growing nation possessing its own land offers numerous significant benefits that contribute to its overall development and stability. Firstly, land ownership is integral to national identity. It provides a sense of belonging and cultural heritage, allowing citizens to connect deeply with their history and traditions. Economically, having control over land facilitates resource management, enabling the nation to harness its natural resources effectively. This leads to increased agricultural production, enhancing food security, and promoting rural development, which can significantly boost the national economy. Additionally, land ownership allows for infrastructure development, as governments can plan and implement projects like roads, schools, and hospitals more efficiently, socially equitable land distribution can promote community cohesion and reduce conflict, as people feel a sense of ownership and responsibility towards their land and community. Furthermore, owning land empowers citizens, enabling them to engage in sustainable practices that protect the environment. Ultimately, the benefits of land ownership for a growing nation encompass economic prosperity, social stability, cultural identity, and environmental sustainability, creating a solid foundation for long-term growth and development. We invite you to participate in our Land Blitz event scheduled for March 2025. This is a fantastic opportunity to engage with us and explore the benefits and possibilities that await. We look forward to seeing you there. Hasaloo, we got a bishop part of that. See what I'm saying? Hasaloo, we got a bishop part of that. Hasaloo, we got a bishop part of that. Shalom brothers, shalom sisters, Bishop Nathaniel here. You know what day it is, that's right, it is Shout Out Tuesday. It's Shout Out Tuesday, and you know how I love to read your letters of exhortation and your donations of support, because I could not do this work without you. I often love to cover a little bit of our hidden history before we read those letters. So what we're going to do now, as we often do, is get our libations on. But I'm still on this beet drink. Get our diet food on. Sit back, relax, and let's enjoy today's hidden history clip. All right. The Negroes and the Jews. Written by Lenora E. Burson. Now, Lenora E. Burson is a Caucasian woman. Let's go inside the book and see what she came up with. I'm on page 211. He recalled, my father was a janitor who liked to read the Bible and used to say, we are descended from the tribe of Judah. We are Jews. That's where the word Jew comes from, Judah. Respies clung to the idea. Unlike the word Negro, Jew conjured up to him a rich history and culture, a religion and a language. Now I'm going to go down. You see the word the here, right? The. So I'm going to just start on the next page. For time's sake. The Negro's claim to be Jewish is legitimate. Let's read that again. The Negro's claim to be Jewish is legitimate. The land of Israel is located in Western Asia and borders on North Africa. All of the native inhabitants of that region were non-white, meaning not Caucasian. When Spain expelled its Jews in 1492, many of them went to Africa. It seems probable that some of them were brought later to America as slaves. The spirituals never sing of African rivers. It's always the Jordan or the Red Sea. They don't sing about African chiefs or kings. It's David or Moses 
or some other Jewish characters from the Bible. The Image of the Black and Western Art. Edited by David Byman, Henry Louis Gates Jr. I always tell you, David Byman is a racist. Henry Louis Gates Jr. is asleep while this demon here is writing his rhetoric. Anyway, let's go inside the book. And I'm going here just for a moment. I just want to show you something. I want you to see this. Plate 84, Abba Moses swimming across the Nile. Now, a lot of people might not know that this word, let me zoom in on it. This word Abba means father. It's Hebrew for father. Father Moses swimming across the Nile. The Nile, as we all know, is in Egypt and Africa. Okay, let's take a look at plate 84. Here's Moses swimming across the Nile. Okay, what color is he? Black. So now, why would our people have to hire, and Moses is black, that means his brother Aaron is black. His sister Miriam is black. Why would our people have to hire an impoverished, broke, white Jewish guy to teach the scriptures? Well, we have so much work to do. So much work to do. Now, in this book, this guy, David Byman, says, oh, this is possibly a converted Ethiopian. No, no, it's telling you Abba Moses, Father Moses. That's who this is. And you got to think about it. Why wouldn't he just write the word in English here? Why did he put the Hebrew word for father here to throw everybody off? You might think this is someone completely different, but no, we know this is Moses. A tribute for the Negro being a vindication of the moral, intellectual, and religious capabilities of the colored portion of mankind. All right, this was published in 1848. I'm going over to page. All right, I'm going to start here where it says the Jews. The Jews, however, slightly, their features may have assimilated to those of other nations amongst whom they are scattered from the causes already stated, certainly form a very striking example as regards the uncertainty of perpetual perpetuity in color, excuse me, descended from one stock and prohibited by the most sacred institutions, talking about God's laws, from intermarrying with the people of other nations and yet dispersed according to the divine prediction. That's Deuteronomy 28 verse 64, the divine prediction about them being scattered into every country on the globe. This one people is marked with the colors of all. Fair in Britain and Germany, brown in France and in Turkey, swarthy, that means black, in Portugal and in Spain. Olive, that means brown or black. Olives come in three colors, green, brown, or black. Olive in Syria and in Chaldea. Tawny, that also means black. Tawny or copper colored in Arabia and in Egypt whilst they are black at Congo in Africa. Wow, talking about the Jews. Let's move over. All right, let's read this. A remarkable fact in the history of Loango and the empire of Congo is that the country, according to a statement which was fully credited by Oldendorp, himself a writer of most correct judgment and of unimpeachable Veracity contains many Jews settled in it. Who retain their religious rights and the distinct habits which keep them isolated from other nations. Though thus separate from the African population, they are black, talking about the Jews, and resemble the other Negroes in every respect as to physical character. It is probably... In allusion to this case that Pennington in his textbook says, the descendants of a colony of Jews originally from Judea settled on the coast of Africa are black. See that? 
talking about the Jews, the colony of Jews originally from Judea, settled on the coast of Africa, are black. This was written in 1848. Wow. Mm. A Social and Religious History of the Jews by Salo Whitmay of Barron. All right, this was printed in 1973. The Jewish Publication Society of America. Well, all righty then. Let's go inside this book. I'm going over to page 265. All right, read along with me. During the last quarter of the 16th century, there were several other accusations against individuals who allegedly performed such suspicious acts as removing the sinews from certain parts of, the, of animals before eating them, cooking their food with oil rather than lard, and betraying other symptoms of Jewish infidelity, meaning Jewish unbelief. Less routine was the case of a sentence centenarian, that means 100-year-old Negro, 100-year-old Negro, Pedro Alvarez. So there was this black man named Pedro Alvarez who was reported to have insisted that God had commanded all men to be circumcised. This Negro, Pedro Alvarez, was a Jew. Okay? He was a Jew. And this was in Spain. That's Iberia. All right. Let's go on because as you read further down, it goes into the, Inqu the Spanish Inquisition against the Jews. It's funny how they threw in this hundred year old Negro and it says there was no trial because Alvarez died in prison. This was regarding the Spanish Inquisition, the Spanish Inquisition. All right. Let's move on. I'm going to page 354. A new impetus to seek shelter in the unexplored dark continent, the dark continent is Africa, was given to Jewish refugees from the Iberian uh, persecutions, from the Spanish persecutions after 1391 in the area around Tendirma, some 60 miles southwest of Timbuktu. That's in Africa. Founded in 1496, Jews had allegedly lived for generations under seven kings, each of whom had an army of 12,000 knights. Wow. You all see that? So you had Jews living in Africa, found in this area, founded in 1496. Remember, the persecution started here in 1391. They founded this place, Tendirma, in 1496, and they lived for generations under seven kings, each of whom had an army of 12,000 knights. So the black Jews were the knights. Let's, 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 let's not just stop there, though. Let's go down. It has been suggested by no, by no less an authority from Friedrich Ratzel that the island of Sao Tome, that's St. Thomas, that's on the west coast of Africa, discovered by the Portuguese in 1471 and subsequently used as a place of deportation for Jews unwilling to adopt baptism. You had many of the black Jews who refused to be baptized in a Roman Catholic church under Christianity, which was nothing but white supremacy. We recall the forcible removal of Portuguese Jewish children to that locality in 1497. So these Portuguese Jewish children were removed to the island of St. Thomas, okay? May have been instrumental in the settlement of many Jews in the neighboring West African lands. Do y'all see this? Do y'all see this? Do you understand? Let's read it again. It has been suggested by no less an authority from Friedrich Ratzel that the island of Sao Tome, St. Thomas, that's on the west coast of Africa, discovered by the Portuguese in 1471 and sub subsequently used as a place of deportation for Jews unwilling to adopt baptism. We recall the forcible removal of Portuguese children, Portuguese Jewish children, 
to that locality in 1497 may have been instrumental in the settlement of many Jews in the neighboring West African lands. Wow. Wow. All right. Look at this. These tenuous lines of investigation have been pursued mainly by anthropologists who have looked for patterns of thought and behavior reminiscent of those known among Jews and found among various African tribes and their descendants transplanted, let me zoom in, let me just zoom in right there a little better, uh, known among Jews and found among various African tribes and their descendants transplanted to the new world. The new world is the United States of America and the Caribbean islands. Okay, that's the new world. So you had Jews from among various African tribes transplanted to the new world. Okay, representative of that school of thought is Joseph J. Williams, whose work on Hebrewisms in West Africa still is a major source of information, both substantive and speculative, beginning with the study of Ashanti descendants living in Jamaica. Williams writes, this is what he writes, in the first place, many Hebrewisms were discovered in the Ashanti tribal customs. Then several Ashanti words were found to have a striking resemblance to those of equivalent Hebrew meaning. Finally, the supreme being of the Ashanti gave, gave strong indication of being the Yahweh of the Old Testament. I was taught the pronunciation is Yahweh, but we know it's talking about the same God of the Old Testament in the Bible, of the entire Bible, as a matter of fact. Look at this. Of course, since these, since these descendants of Ashanti tribesmen lived alongside of, sometimes in the very households of Jamaican Jews, the origin of such contacts in the Ashanti's original African habitat can no longer be ascertained. And they lost that history. General History of Africa. Editor B.A. Ogot. I'm on page 67. I'm going down right here to this paragraph. Africans also settled along parts of the Malabar coast during the 17th and 18th centuries. These were black Jews. Let's read that again. Africans also settled along parts of the Malabar coast during the 17th and 18th centuries. These were black Jews, descendants of African slaves who had left Cochin and Karela in southern India to come and settle on that coast. Most became domestics and intermarried with local inhabitants and other Jews. What I want you to see is that the Africans who settled along Malabar were black Jews, descendants of African slaves. Woo, that was some good history, if I do say so myself, and I do. Hey, today we're going to look at a clip, a commentary that I want to do. Uh, um, today's episode is called Arab Palestinians Today. American Blacks Tomorrow. What do I mean by that? Uh, what you see happening in Palestine, Gaza, Lebanon on a global scale, a global initiative, is going to happen within the United States to so-called black people. Now, I don't care if you are West Indian. I don't care if you are Haitian, Puerto Rican, or Mexican. It's going to happen to our people, the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay, they Laws will be changed. Or they're already in the makings of being changed by the ADL, SPLC, APAC regarding hate speech. They're gathering all information now. Who's against these fake Israelis? Anybody who has posted or spoken anything. And that includes some of you white folks too. You go and get it too. But mainly it's our people that they're gunning for, the 12 tribes of Israel. Um, we're going to open up with Psalms chapter 64 and verse 8. So they shall make their own tongue to fall upon themselves. All that see them shall flee 
away. What does that mean? When it says they shall make their own tongue, tongue to fall upon themselves, this is Esau, white folks revealing the evils that white folks do, have done, are doing, and will do. That's what that's talking about. It says, all that see them shall flee away. You're going to realize that this white man who has portrayed himself as God, Jesus, the angels, and the Israelites are none other than the children of the devil. Watch, as we go on through this lesson, you're going to see for yourself, you're going to see for yourself. So, what we going to do, what we going to do, we're going to get to the video. You ready? Let's begin. Genocide against the Palestinian people has been facilitated from day one by the Western media. They legitimized Israel's genocidal onslaught, erased the incessantly stated in public genocidal intent of Israeli leaders and officials, whitewashed Israeli atrocities, on endless occasions refused to even cover atrocities committed by the Israeli state, dehumanized Palestinians, failed to accurately represent the full horror of what's been unleashed by the Israeli state. Right, I even told y'all before, you saw it in the news. They are killing all Arab journalists, all Palestinian journalists. They destroyed Al Jazeera. Understand that. They are uh, uh, shooting journalists in the head, but not the white journalists from the Christian Broadcast Network. Check it out. Let's go on. Against Gaza and beyond, failed to interrogate the complicity of Western governments, we really could go on. This latest horror underlines this outright racism and complicity in genocide. We should have it's nothing but racism. It's 100% racism. They. Listen, these Israelis, they are the Nazis. They are the Nazis. That's why they call themselves Ashkenazis. That's who they are. You've been fooled. Look at the way they act. These are not God's chosen people. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me remind you. Let the Son of God remind you. Revelation chapter 3. I'm going to read 2 9. I know thy works, because we put a whole lot of work in Smyrna and here. And tribulation. We caught a whole lot of tribulation in ancient Smyrna. We're catching hell here too. Tribulation here. And poverty. As a people, we are poverty stricken. But thou art rich. Why? Because all the promises in the Bible pertain to the 12 tribes of Israel. Watch this. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not but are the synagogue of Satan. Hear what Jesus said? Do you hear what Yahushai, Yahusha, as some of y'all say, said? Call him the synagogue of Satan. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer, because our people did suffer under them. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. Rome was casting us into prison. So God is calling the white man the devil. That ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. So our people were put to death in Smyrna. Now you say, Christians like to say, ah, that was back then. That was back then. Well, here's a future prophecy. Revelation 3, 9. Behold, this is Jesus speaking. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. Did that happen yet? Where in history did these fake Jewish people come and worship before our feet? Where? I challenge any Christian pastor. I challenge your Pope. When did that come to pass? That's a future prophecy. It has not come to pass. Now, not yet. Now that bottom part, where it said, uh, uh, and to know that I have loved thee. Because when you look in at our state in this day and age, it seems like God does not love us. As a people, we are on the bottom. First, we're the last hired, but first fired, redlined. Get the worst education, worst food, plan parenthood in every uh, black, black and brown community. Okay, marriages are broken up, dysfunctional. 
high incarceration rate, it seems like God don't love us. But regardless, God does love us. And he says, I will make them come and worship before our feet. And to know that I've loved thee. So God's going to make it happen. The Lord's going to make it happen. We just got to be patient and endure. But let's go back to the video. And aside, we should have no hesitation in saying any of these things. In the early hours of this morning, the Israeli state attacked a hospital in Deir el Bala in the center of Gaza. What? Here, many displaced Palestinians were sheltering in tents. Wow. The result, multiple Palestinian civilians burned to death. Burned to death. The footage I have watched is as nightmarish as it is possible to get. Damn. And will stay with me forever. Mm. It shows Palestinian civilians connected to intravenous drips in hospital beds, burning to death. Burning. You see one writhing. One of them is clearly a child, an injured child who was sleeping in their bed, connected to an IV drip at what was supposed to be a place of safety, mm. a hospital. Mm. And then an Israeli missile explodes and they're burned to death. Burned to death. You can see Palestinians who are unable to reach them, screaming, overwhelmed with unimaginable mental agony. Wow. In a different place, in a different time, Shaban would have had a bright future ahead of him. Mm. But Shaban was born in Gaza, where people now measure their futures in hours and days. Uh oh. Hello, I'm Shaban from Palestine. I'm a student studying computer system engineer. Uh, I was displaced from the north to south under the occupation threats. Shaban was the eldest son. When the war started, he left home in Gaza and built this tent for his family in the grounds of Al Aqsa Hospital. Mm. I'm taking care of my family as I'm the oldest. I have two sisters and two little brothers. So, this is a good young man, or a nice young man. 19 years old. Finished college, I mean, finished high school, on his way to college, studying to be an engineer. He was displaced and he's taking care of his family. He built a tent. Brothers and uh, my parents. We live in a very hard circumstances, suffering from various uh, things, such as, such as uh, homelessness and uh, limited food and uh, extremely uh, limited medicine. Later that day, he donated blood to help the wounded in Gaza. Mm. Shaban continued to study in his tent, but walked for half an hour each day just to get internet access. He set up a GoFundMe page to raise money to take his family to Egypt, Damn. to safety. Then, ten days ago, he was injured in an Israeli strike while sleeping in a mosque. Shaban was still recovering when another Israeli airstrike hit the hospital grounds on Sunday night Y'all and see his this? tent caught alight. Wow. Look we at are this. about to show you an image from the final moments of his life. With a drip still attached to him, his arms reached out and then went rigid in agony. Look at him! Burning alive! Burning alive! His mother, Allah, was also trapped and died next to her son in the inferno. Shaban was on fire. My father was busy with my younger brother, so I couldn't help but run towards Shaban to try to help him. Wow. People stopped me from getting close to the danger, saying the civil defense was on its way to put the fire out. I kept saying, but my brother's on fire, my brother's on fire. Please let me go. They wouldn't let me. My I, I, I gotta stop it there. Now this is heart wrenching. You feel bad. Now, I, once you understand the Bible, you understand why these things are occurring. It's like <clears throat> many of the prophets, I'll give an example of what the prophet uh, Daniel said. Daniel chapter 7, verse 28. After Daniel saw destruction, he said, Hitherto is the end of the matter. As for me, Daniel, my cogitations, meaning my thoughts, much troubled me, and my countenance changed in me, but I kept the matter in my heart. When it says his cogitations much troubled him, he was devastate, devastated at the destruction he saw. That's no different than in Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 16. When I heard my belly tremble, my lips quivered at the voice, rottenness entered into my bones, and I trembled in myself that I might rest in the day of trouble. When he cometh up unto the people, he will invade them with his truth. My point with that verse 
Daniel and Habakkuk, based on what they saw, they were devastated mentally, psychologically. It hurt them. So I'm looking at this. I know the things that the Arabs did to our people. But when I see young people, a kid, burning to death, that, I'm like, dag, dag. But I understand why it's happening. When you go to the book of Amos, now I ain't falling out crying and nothing, but I'm saying what you see happening over there in real time, this white man going to turn up the heat on us here. <clears throat> Y'all keep on playing. And no, I'm not saying go out there and protest none of that stuff like that. I ain't saying that. I'm saying you better, we better get ourselves together. That's what I'm saying. Where's Amos at? Oh, here. Amos, listen. Why is this happening? Why is this happening? Amos chapter 1. Because I know your pastors don't teach you a daggone thing. Amos chapter 1 and verse 6. Thus saith the Lord, for three transgressions of Gaza. Of who? Of Gaza. And for four, meaning four transgressions, I will not turn away the punishment thereof because, this is why God is punishing Gaza, because they carried away captive the whole captivity to deliver them up to Edom. What did the Arabs do? They delivered our people up into slavery to the hands of this white man. The white man is Edom. Their name is Edom in the Bible. E-D-O-M, meaning red people. Amos 1 verse 8. Well, this is going to get back. And I will cut off the inhabitant from Ashdod's going to get it. And him that holdeth the scepter, scepter from Ashkelon going to get it. And I will turn my hand against Ekron going to get it. And a remnant of the Philistines, that's the Palestinians, shall perish, saith the Lord God. Turmoil is coming. Judgment from God is coming. And God uses this wicked white man as a whipping stick on the nations. How do I know that? When you go to Psalm 17, watch, watch what it says. Listen, listen, listen. Get your Bible. Follow along with me. Psalms chapter 17 and verse 13. Arise, O Lord, disappoint him, cast him down. Deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. What is God's sword on earth? The wicked. Who's the wicked? Edom, E-D-O-M, from men which are thy hand. See that? From men which are thy hand. God uses men on earth to punish people. From men which are thy hand, O Lord, from men of the world, which have their portion in this life. And who's, why does it say in this life? Because they're not getting the kingdom of heaven on earth, New Jerusalem. They're not going to be blessed. They're not going to inherit that at all. Sorry, black Christians, you've been deceived and lied to. The white man, the old oppressive white man is not going to do all his evil and get the kingdom of heaven. You must be crazy. You must be stupid. Uh, you you simple as hell. I don't know what's wrong with you. Let's read it again. Verse 14. From men which are thy hand, O Lord, from men of the world, which have their portion in this life. And whose belly thou fillest with thy hid treasure. That's destruction. They are full of children and leave the rest of their substance to their babes. When they destroy, maim, kill, destroy, and steal, who do they leave it to? Their children. Oh, in this video, you're going to see all that. You're going to see it. But let's go back to the video. My brother was burning in front of my eyes, and I couldn't do anything to help him. And it's, it's an sad. indescribable feeling. No one in the world can understand it. Can you imagine seeing your loved ones die in front of you? Your brother, your role model in life, your mother, your rock and caretaker. The Israeli military said it hit a Hamas command center. As yet, they've... Sh you see the lie? That boy who's 19 built a tent for his family. Then he goes to give, give, give blood. And they said it's a, it's, a, it's a terrorist command center. Are you kidding me? When Christ says the white man is the devil, the synagogue of Satan, y'all best to believe him. Best to believe him. Let's go back to the video. Shown no evidence of that. They've also said that the fire was started by secondary explosions in the hospital car park. It is one theory. Shut up. 
It was a painful scene. It's hard. I saw my cousin and my uncle's wife both on fire. They were moving around, trying to stop it. I really don't understand what we did to deserve this. You don't know, she doesn't understand. Now, this is a little girl. She says she doesn't understand what she did to deserve this. Well, <clears throat> racism. White people are inherently racist. They, now, they call Arabs sand niggas. I don't know if you ever heard the terminology before, but they call them sand niggas. Now, you Arabs, y'all done some dirt to us. But I do feel your pain. I do feel your pain. But let's go on. You Arabs going to realize this white man that y'all loved or loved so much, like the Holy Scriptures say, they are the devil, the synagogue of Satan. But let's go on. We're displaced families. What did we do wrong? Shaban's final months were spent hiding from the fighting in a place where there is now nowhere to hide. That's his father. شعبان كان يحب أمه أكثر شيء يوم ما تصاوب أمه بتقول يا ريت أنا ولا أنت يما اللي أقول يما أنا في حضنك ولما نستشهد اندفن في حضن لما نستشهد حطناهم في حضن بعض 165 days of the continuous genocide against us now today exactly we have five months away from our, from my home five months away from my room Five months we exactly lived in a tent. Now we are in Al Aqsa Martyrs Hospital in the middle of Gaza, Dir al Balah. Uh, I'm taking care of my family as I'm the oldest. I have two sisters and two little brothers and uh, my parents. Shaban, Ibn, Wahuya, Usahbi, Ukulish of Hayat, Kunit Shaban, Shaif, Dinya Kulafi. قال يابا بدي اخش طب الابو ما هنش عليه اطلع ابني برا وغرب برا قلت له لا يابا خليك هنا قبال عيني يا ريت سفرته برا اسال الله العظيم رب العرش العظيم انه ما يدوقوا لاي بني ادم لانه والله 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 انك يا شعبان you can see Gaza on the horizon, mm. a shattered landscape. But these people would all like to go and live Pay attention. There. This These Israelis. are the settlers in waiting, settlers. keen to start a new life, to annex Gaza for Israel. But what of the Palestinians who live in Gaza now? Most we spoke to suggested they should be expelled, but some here were even more extreme. I just think we need to kill them, every one of them, and that's it. We need to kill them, every one of them, and that's it. And if not that, because the, the country will not let that happen, the government. Just at least, the least we can do is just kick them out of our land. Because this is our home, this is our land, and we deserve it. Settling Gaza was... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Y'all playing games. When I... When the Bible is the only true book. Let me... I got to read this. I got to read First John chapter 3. Based on what that young girl said, where she learned that from? 
First John 3 10, in this, the children of God are manifest and the children of the devil. The children of God are manifest and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God. Are these Israelis doing righteousness? Are these Israelis doing righteousness? No. Hell no. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God. Neither he that loveth not his brother. Do these nations, do they love their brother? Huh? No, they don't. Wow. Wow. Did y'all hear what she said? I got to go back because I know some of you are slow, especially you black Christians. I got to go back to her. Where's she at? I'm going to find her. And that's it. We need to kill them, every one of them, and that's it. And if not that, because the, the country will not let that happen, the government. Just at least, the least we can do is just kick them out of our land because this is our home, this is our land. And we deserve it. So Y'all don't hear this? Was once a fringe idea, but now it's so mainstream. The national security minister was here telling the crowd that it was the moral and correct solution. The truth is that this is the most moral, the most correct solution, not under force. But this, perhaps the biggest draw, a woman who spent 50 years urging people to seize land and settle in the West Bank. She told me Gaza could be occupied even while soldiers were still fighting. How do you imagine the war will end to let you live in Gaza? While the war is continuing, we will fill the areas that were liberated with Jewish community. Israel's focus was once again trained on Jabalia in northern Gaza. Yes, Here, yes. people have been rounded up, men separated from women and children. Israel says it is offering them safe passage that hundreds have already gone. But as they were leaving, more airstrikes hit this cursed town. The people of Jabalia, like so many across Gaza, feel besieged and battered. And yet, just across the border, there are others who are desperate to move in. <sighs> that was it. Wow. You cannot make this stuff up. If y'all didn't know who the devil was, now you know. And I know I know what some of you might be thinking, what about the Arabs? Saudi Arabia, those are the same people. What are they doing? Well, I'm so glad you asked. What are they doing? Well, the crown prince, put him on the screen. Put the crown prince on the screen. He's living the life of luxury because he's in bed with the United States of America, okay? Let, let, me get you, let me get Ezekiel 27 and verse 21. Listen, Arabia and all the princes of Kedar, they occupied with thee in lambs and rams and goats, and these were they thy merchants. So he's living lovely. He's living so good, high on a hog. Proverbs eleven twenty eight. now, watch this. Now, Proverbs eleven twenty eight. 28, Proverbs eleven twenty eight. Proverbs 11, where is it? It reads, he that trusteth in his riches shall fall, but the righteous shall flourish as a branch. The crown prince is living lovely. Wealth on top of wealth on top of wealth. It appears that he could care less about his race. He could care less about the people that share the same religion with him being decimated, decapitated, blown to smithereens. He doesn't care. Or is he playing a game? Is he playing a game? I'd like to give him the benefit of the doubt and say that he is playing a game and he is setting up these so-called Israelis. Because the Bible does say, the Bible does prophesy. Second Ezra uh, 15, I think it is. Y'all know where I'm going. Second Ezra 15 and verse 
28, behold a horrible vision and the appearance thereof from the east, the eastern hemisphere, where the nations of the dragons of Arabia shall come out with many chariots, war vehicles, and a multitude of them shall be carried as the wind upon earth, that all they which hear them may fear and tremble. Also the Carmanians, that's Iran, raging and wrath shall go forth as the wild boars of the wood, and with great power shall they come and join battle with them, and shall waste a portion of the land of the Assyrian. They're going to waste a portion of the land of the state of Israel. That's what it means when it says the land of the Assyrians. So now, is he going to be part of this? I'm talking about the crown prince of Arabia. I don't know. If he is a coon, and if he is an Arab coon, somebody's, the Lord's going to move him out the way, somehow, some way. Or is he playing a very clever game? I don't know. We will find out. We will find out. Ah, look at him there with, with Biden. Uh, not Biden. Yeah, yeah, Biden. President Biden. The hell is, what is the United States deal with Saudi Arabia? The U.S. provides military protection to the kingdom in exchange for a reliable oil supply, pricing of oil in the U.S. dollars, and support for American foreign policy. Embassy of Saudi Arabia, Washington, D.C. Do y'all see that? Do y'all see that? Y'all see it for yourself. You see it for yourself. Now, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? Well, brothers and sisters, that young man, that young 19-year-old man, boy, he's, he's a boy, he's a kid, who burned to death. You saw his younger brother in pain, saying he couldn't save his brother. He tried to save his brother. And this, this young man, that, you know, his brother's about 16, 17. So when I see it, I feel that thing. I feel that. The father, you saw the father burnt up all on his face. His father said he ran into the fire. He could not save his son or his wife. Mother and son died in their arms like that with each other. It's sad. It's, I understand, again, I know the Lord is allowing all these things to happen. I do know that. Don't get me wrong. I know it's going to happen. And more things must happen. But what did you turn that father into? What did you turn that young brother into? Terrorists. Any sane man, except you black Christians, you Christian men out there, you, you, you have no spirit, you have no soul, you have no mind. But any rational man would say, and say to himself, they killed my wife, they killed my oldest son, they burned me. I have nothing else to live for but to get payback. I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you, sucker. You, brothers, y'all know what I'm saying. That's how a rational man out in the world would think. Watch this. Jeremiah 51. Woo! -hoo -hoo. Wake up, crown prince. What is wrong with you? Get off your butt and do something. Be a man. Raise up the Arabs. Do something. And I know what's going to happen according to prophecy. But Jeremiah 51. Did I say Jeremiah 51? Uh, yeah, Jeremiah 51, and I just get excited, y'all bear with me, Jeremiah 51, verse 11, watch this, make bright the arrows, gather the shields, meaning get your missiles ready, get your armaments ready, that's what the shields, make bright the arrows, that's the missiles, gather the shields, protection, the Lord hath raised up the spirit of the kings of the Medes, who's the king of the Medes, kings of the Medes? Iran, Iran, Iran. Didn't we just read that in 2nd Ezra 15, 28, 29? Yes! The Arabs is going to lead the battle and the Medes going to join in. So now, here's talking about the Medes. For his device is against Babylon. Babylon represents the United States of America. And guess, guess who else? Israel. <laughs> to destroy it. Let me read that again. Make bright the arrows, gather the shields. The Lord hath raised up the spirit of the kings of the Medes. For his device is against Babylon to destroy it. 
this place is going to be destroyed because it is the vengeance of the Lord, the vengeance of his temple. Set up the standard upon the walls of Babylon. Make the watch strong. Set up the watchmen. Prepare the ambushes, meaning traps. For the Lord hath both devised and done that which he had spoken against the inhabitants of Babylon. What are you, you going to do? O thou that dwellest upon many waters. America dwells on many waters. Look at the map. They got over 840 bases worldwide. Abundant in treasure. America is the richest country on earth. That's why they're able to send Israel all manner of billions and billions of dollars and not give a nigga nothing. O thou that, excuse my language, O thou that dwellest upon many waters, abundant in treasures, thine end is come. And the measure of thy covetousness, the Lord of hosts have sworn by himself. Ooh, the Lord of hosts has sworn by himself, saying, surely I will fill thee with men as with caterpillars. What does a caterpillar do to a tree? Eats it from within. So what is this a, met a metaphor for? Surely I will fill thee, the thee is Babylon, with men as with caterpillars. These men will destroy within the country. And they shall lift up a shout against thee. Guess what that shout is? Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar! Boom! Do you understand? Do you understand? Let's get some more. Let's get some more. Let's get some more. Now, I said, well, not I, not I. The Bible has already proven the white man is the synagogue of Satan. The white man is the children of the devil. Watch this, Isaiah 14. I'm sorry, I got to get it, I got to get it. Do I want to get that one now? No, I don't want that one now. I want her back. I got to continue with the, the caterpillars. They're back, come back, come back. Terrorism, terrorism is coming. Habakkuk chapter two and verse four. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. This white man's soul is lifted up as God. His soul is lifted up as Jesus. His soul is lifted up as the angels. His soul is lifted up as the Israelites. His soul is lifted up, but then it says, is not upright in him. His spirit is crooked, perverted, and twisted. Y'all saw the clip. You saw the young girl say, kill them all, kill them all. You heard that. You heard the old woman say, while the war's going on, we are going in and take land. You heard her. I'm not lying on these people. I don't bear false witness. But the just shall live by his faith. We are the just. We shall live by Christ. Verse 5. Yea, also because he transgresseth by wine. Wine is a metaphor for lies. Wine is a metaphor for political or religious lies. He is a proud man. Neither keepeth at home, who enlarges his desire as hell, and is as death. This white man is as death and cannot be satisfied. You think he'll, he, he'll steal a little and leave it alone? No, he'll steal everything. He don't just kill one person. He kill everybody. Let's go on. And is as death and cannot be satisfied, but gathereth unto him all nations and heapeth unto him all people. What does that mean? Once he devastates people, nations, and countries, he allows those remnants of the people to come to the United States of America and or Britain. Let's read on. Verse 6. Shall not all these take up a parable against him and a taunting proverb against him? The him is the white man. And say, woe to him that increaseth that which is not his. The oil in the Gulf region does not belong to the white man, but he acts like it does. The gold and diamonds throughout the continent of Africa does not belong to the white man, but he acts like it's his. Woe to him that increase of that which is not his. The land of Israel is not his. Hell, America is not his. South Africa is not his. Australia is not his. Woe to him that increase of that which is not his. How long, how long shall this go on? And to him that ladeth himself with thick clay. What is the thick clay? The people that's coming in. 
Shall they not rise up suddenly that shall bite thee? What does that mean? Rise up, rise up from sleep. It's called sleeper cells. Terrorists, talk about terrorists. Shall they not rise up suddenly that shall bite thee and awake that shall vex thee? Terrorists. That was what it, that's what it means, awake. Awake from sleep. Because there are sleeper cells throughout America. Sleeper cells throughout Britain, France. Sleeper cells in Israel. And awake that shall vex thee and thou shalt be for booties unto them. Y'all see that right there? Let's go down. Because thou hast, verse 8 tells you why the terrorist activity is going to happen. Because thou hast spoiled many nations. Do you see them spoiling Palestinians? Because thou hast spoiled many nations. What an S. All the remnant of the people shall spoil thee. Because of men's blood. Do y'all see that? Because of men's blood. And for the violence of the land. Of the city. And of all that dwell therein. You see the violence of the land. You see the blood shed. You don't think these people are going to get some uh, uh, a get back? Oh, yes, they will. It might not be this month. It might not be this year. But it's coming. It's surely coming. And don't say we didn't warn you. Here at IUIC, our job is to prophesy what is going to happen happen. The angels are activated. The angels are being sent out in the minds of these nations. They're going to get some get back. You churches just move out the way. You don't know what's going on in the world. Verse 9, woe to him that coveteth an evil covetousness to his house, that he may set his nest on high. They took the moon, that he may be delivered from the power of evil. They know destruction is going to happen. Thou hast consulted shame to thy house by cutting off many people and has sinned against thy soul. This man that has sinned against his own soul thinks he's going to also get the kingdom of heaven on earth. It's not going to happen. Not going to happen. For the stone shall cry out of the wall and the beam of the timber shall answer it. Destruction. Boom, boom, boom. Woe to him that buildeth a town with blood and establisheth a city by iniquity. They're trying to rebuild Gaza, steal Gaza, take the land over there. Woo, you hear what the Bible says? I hope y'all understand. Now, I said something earlier. I said something. This white man, y'all gonna realize who he is. Oh, Isaiah, oh, oh, just popped in my mind. Isaiah 14, watch this, watch this, watch this. Isaiah 14, verse 16. They that see thee, Talking about white, they that see thee, the thee is the white man. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms? Look at Gaza! Look at Palestine! Don't you realize even America dropped seven bombs on seven countries when Obama was in, when he was president? This chapter is talking about Lucifer, the devil. It says, they that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, is this the man, Lucifer's man on earth, the children of the devil, the synagogue of Satan, that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof. Look at Gaza. Look at Lebanon. Look, look at, up there, where's that at, uh, up there, the northern, Syria, Damascus. Look what they're doing, brothers and sisters, look. This man is the devil the Bible speaks of. Verse 17, that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house of his prisoners. We're his prisoners. Has he opened the house? Has he let us go? No, to go back to our homeland? No, he has not. Learn the Bible. Learn the Bible, the Word of God. You don't know it. You don't know it. I'm trying to help you out here. Now, I said something. I said Palestinians today, American blacks tomorrow. When I say American blacks, I'm talking about the tribe of Judah. I'm talking about the 12 tribes, actually. What's going to happen, you ask? Watch this. I'm going to go some. Moses told you Deuteronomy 4. Deuteronomy 4. 
Pay attention. Pay attention. Pay attention. Deuteronomy 4 and verse 30. Watch what it says. When thou art in tribulation, and all these things are come upon thee, even in the latter days. Latter days? What are we living now? The latter days. Moses prophesied that the 12 tribes of Israel, our people, would be in tribulation in the latter days. Then he goes on. If thou turn to the Lord thy God, and shalt be obedient unto his voice, for the Lord thy God is a merciful God, he will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, nor forget the covenant of thy fathers, which he sware unto them. You see that? We are, it is prophesied we will go through tribulation in his last days. That's why I said, Palestine today, our people tomorrow. Wake up, brothers and sisters. Wake up. Prepare yourselves. Prepare your hearts. Prepare your minds. Prepare your souls. Prepare yourselves. Let's get some more. First Thessalonians. 3 and 4, New Testament. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 4. For verily, when we were with you, we told you before that we should suffer tribulation, even as it came to pass, and ye know. The Apostle Paul was always consistently warning the Israelites of tribulation during his time and future. Let's get some more. 2 Thessalonians 1 and 6. Seeing it, is a right, seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. So those that trouble us, that bring tribulation on us, it's a righteous thing for God to pay back those nations. And to you who are troubled, rest with us. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God. And that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. Now see that? Tribulation is coming. Just get ready for it. Just get ready for it. Tribulation, in a sense, is a good thing. Why do I say tribulation is a good thing? Although it's heartache and pain, there's a purpose behind it. Job 36 and verse 15 reads, He delivereth the poor in his affliction and openeth their ears in oppression. The only way we can really hear the voice of God, the word of God, as it is written, is when we are being afflicted and he's, oh, and he's able to open our understanding, our spiritual ears in oppression. Let me give you another one. Psalms 119. Psalms 119, bear with me. Psalms 119 and verse 71. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. Watch this, here's some more. Hosea 515, 515. And it reads, I will go and return to my place. This is the Lord speaking. Till they acknowledge their offense. Have you acknowledged your offense yet? You. Have you acknowledged your offense against God? Till they acknowledge their offense and seek my face. In order to seek God's face, you must know that you're an Israelite and believe in Christ. In their affliction, they will seek me early. You see that, that, that last sentence right there? In their affliction, they will seek me early. So there is a divine purpose behind affliction. This is to my major affliction. We ain't got to no, know. A lot of you live good now. You got your homes, your house, your cars. You go here, you go there. You, you go everywhere you want. But this is a talk. This is talking about a major affliction is coming. Matthew 24, 29. Watch this. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, What's going to happen to us after the tribulation? Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven. That's missiles. That's missiles falling from the sky, being shot up and coming down. They go up into space and come down. That's the stars falling from heaven. 
Then it says, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. The nation is going to war. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect. Who's his elect? <clears throat> the Israelites. From the four winds. From the one end of heaven to the other. Y'all understand that? Who's the elect? Let me get that for you real quick. Isaiah 45 and 4. For Jacob my servant's sake and Israel mine elect. I have called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. Though thou hast not known me. In a Christian church, you don't know God. You don't know Yahweh. You don't know him. You don't know his son, Yahweh Shai. You don't know him. So back to Matthew 24, that last that verse again, Matthew 24, 31. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from the one end of heaven to the other. Because the Israelites are scattered worldwide. I hope y'all glean something from today's lesson. I hope y'all glean something. Let's get ourselves ready and let's read the letters of exhortation and your donations of support. I got so much in my mind, so much in my mind. All right, let's get to the reading of the shout out letters. This one reads, Shalom Bishop and Leadership, Most High in Christ bless you all. Mary wants to say thank you for your teachings. I'm in a safe place now, doing the work of our Lord, reaching our sisters. Just pray for me as I endure all trials, accept my alms, Continue the mission. Love and blessings, Sister Mary, the Jersey Jew. Thank you, Mary. All praises. This next one reads, uh, My honor, Bishop, hope all is well. I'm still watching online. My health is getting better. Reading four chapters a day and fasting also. Working on my name change. All praises. This is from Brother Haggai. All praises, Brother Haggai. Thank you. All praises to the Lord. All praises. And remember, brothers and sisters, Four chapters a day is the bare minimum. If you can do more, do more. If your eyes hurt, I know those of us up in age, our eyes start to hurt a bit. So listen to the, you can download a Bible app on your phone or YouTube has the Bible audios. Okay, you can get black screen if you want uh, with no light. That's cool. I listen to that one at night. Uh, you can get James Earl Jones. I got that one on my phone. I love James Earl Jones' voice. Um, whatever floats your boat. Okay, get into those. All right, all praises. All right. Um, this next letter reads, uh, General Most High, may the Most High keep you and your family healthy and safe. I pray you had history. I pray you had history with me, them. You would know that I only care about the nation of Israel. I desire to use... The compassion and the writing skills the Most High has bestowed on me. I have never been a selfish child or woman. With your teaching, I have that much more love for my own people. The Most High has blessed me with many gifts. I only want to share them with my own people. I do not want to die and take the skills the Most High has given me to my grave. I have a couple of inventions and a couple of ideas. I'm in no physical position to push forward with these things. But my IUIC Israelite family can. I moved back to Robbins, Illinois from Utah a few days ago. Lord's will, next Sabbath, I'll be in Chicago camp congregating. All praises. This is uh, Shul Shalom, Sister Iska. Iska. Well, Sister Iska, definitely reach out to your Chicago camp leadership with your ideas and concepts. Your gifts will be greatly appreciated. Okay, I'm all, remember, I'm all the way over here in New York. So deal with the IUIC uh, Chicago camp leadership, share it with them so that they can share it with leadership. They can fly out to us and explain to us in greater detail or show us in detail, all right? All praises. Now, this next letter is from Sister D. And I'm going to read this one out. On, I'm going to read this one offline because this is a three page letter, long letter. 
Sister D, I pray for you. I pray all is well. All right. So, brothers and sisters, I want to get to the reading of the shout out donations. We want to give a shout out of thanks to Andrew Ben I. Shout out to John I of Annapolis, Maryland. Shout out to Brother Haggai. Shout out to Henrietta M. All praises. Shout out to Henrietta M. again. And Henrietta M. again. All praises. Shout out to Sister Rosa D. Shout out to Kenneth S. Shout out to Mary the Jersey Jew. Shout out to Ezra I. Ezra I again. Shout out to Sister Albertina D.W. of New Jersey. Shout out to Mr. and Mrs. J. Bennett. Shout out to Pelalaya I. Shout out to Brother Raleigh M. Shout out to E. Israel. Shout out to Linda B. of Virginia. Shout out to Carlton K. Shout out to Larry B. Shout out to Ellis P. Shout out to C. Lattimore. C. Lattimore again. All praises. Shout out to E. Israel. Shout out to C. Lattimore again. C. Lattimore again. Shout out to Scotty L.W. of Maryland. Shout out to Elisheba I. of Florida. Shout out to D. Foster. Shout out to Rose E. D. of Tennessee. Shout out to Jesse B. Shout out to Michael. I want to say your last initial is an N. Senior of Baltimore, Maryland. Shout out to Scott B. of Canton, Ohio. Shout out to Regina D. of Gurney, Illinois. And Regina D. again of Gurney, Illinois. Brothers, sisters, you know how I love to say, let's all of us stay healthy, let's stay faithful, let's stay focused. But most of all, let's all of us stay in the spirit. Most high in Christ, bless you all. Love you. Until next time, shalom. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is children with role models.